Good morning. Welcome back up to our homestead. We got a quite we got quite a bit of snow last night. Like we got probably a good 10 inches or so. I was really getting used to not having a bunch of snow, but I kind of miss it. So I think this morning I'm gonna clear off the solar panels and then I got the tractor going behind me right now and I am going to be like just kind of clearing the snow off all of our roads and everything like that just to make it easier to get around. I'm hoping this is our last snowfall of the season. That would be excellent, but who knows? Let's get to work. We're trying to get some eggs. So we got our egg basket. We got our compost going. We're gonna stir that up and add some browns to it. Hubby is over here on the tractor plowing our road. All right, let's go feed the meat chickens. See if they gave us any eggs. They're getting old enough to give us eggs now. Oh my goodness, can you get through there, Bear? No. <laughs> I think they're laying eggs. Man, it was cold last night. My poor chickies. They're all bundled up over here. So I set up one of our, one of the portable batteries with the brooding heat lamp in it in hopes that they could warm up. It looks like they're defrosting pretty well. Their feathers aren't as frozen wet. I felt so bad for them. They've just been huddled up like this all morning. So hopefully this brooding lamp is helping. They're not even eating. So, and that's not like them to just leave their food. So they're pretty cold. Then I also brought out some greens with some yogurt and some cayenne pepper on them. The cool thing about chickens is they can have all the spicy stuff. They don't have like a heat receptor. So I'm giving them some spicy food, which will allow them to warm up on the inside. guys yesterday we spent a lot of the day just clearing snow and just getting a few things done around the house and all that stuff so we didn't really film that much today is a new day and it is freaking cold last night it got to like six degrees three degrees something like that and that is the coldest that it has been all winter long we went to go do laundry this morning the pipes were frozen so we're just not doing laundry today I am in here working on the Jeep right now and I was having a little issue when it was at idle and I put it in drive, it was like surging a little bit. Just like it would, the idle would rev up and just rub, 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 rub. And then, so I did some research. Sounds like a vacuum issue. So I started looking at all the vacuum lines and I found a vacuum line that each end had electrical tape wrapped around it. So it wasn't really like, didn't have a proper seal or vacuum. I ordered the line, but since this storm hit, it didn't come didn't come in time and we're trying to take this thing out we want to go play so I have an idea to make it work and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do right now all right we're in here so this line right here from the top of the valve cover in the back comes all the way and it goes and if you can see it there's a spot right here for the intake the intake manifold and an electrical tape here and on that side and that's how I found out that it was not giving the proper vacuum now, since that one is not here yet, so I can be here for a couple days, I have the line right here. And since 
I don't have like the proper fittings to put it on there, I'm gonna do these. These are like shrink things for wire. Like the little, um, you like get them hot and they shrink because like to, to protect the wires, you know? So I'm gonna put one of these on both ends and just heat it up, shrink it. That way we'll have like a, a proper seal and then hopefully that'll create, let the vacuum that needs to happen happen and then the surgeon quits. I'm gonna install that right now and then start this thing and see if it fixes it. So this wire thing, it's pretty big, but it is just like barely fits on there. Like I, I can get it on, but it's not like pushing on very well. So I'm gonna start some WD-40 on it really fast and uh, see if that helps me get it on there. All right, well I have this thing on here. I use that shrink wrap and a little bit of ingenuity. That's pretty good, honestly. Got it on there. Not too bad. All right, I just started it up. Zero surging. I have the new line coming, like I was saying. I'll put it on there when I get it, maybe if I need to. I mean, I think I did a pretty good job. All right, guys, I'm doing some more maintenance. A couple days ago, we were driving just like down the road a little bit, just tested out the Jeep, and the front left the front driver's side tire fell off the Jeep. Yep, you heard me right, it fell off the Jeep. And the reason why is because when I put the spacers on, the wheel spacers, I didn't, the, the studs that come on the Jeep are not long enough, I didn't think, so they didn't, it didn't, the nut didn't go all the way through or the bolt didn't go all the way through the nut. It ripped off, it brought in the middle of the trail, so we had to run into town, grab some new studs, come back, fix it on the trail, and then now I'm just making sure everything's tight. I have the wheel off right now, I just tightened all the studs. Now I'm about to put the wheel back on and then do the other side, and I have new studs for the other side that are longer so that that won't happen to that side. You guys can see that on our TikTok and our Instagram if you wanna go see it with the tire off and the, it's just sitting on the disc brake on the ground, but it was on dirt and we were going like 10 miles an hour, so it didn't, nothing really happened. It was uh, exciting. <laughs> and cold, very cold. headed into town we went to Napa and we got a few parts for the Jeep but I also stopped at the feed store and I bought some straw for the chicken coop the meat chicken coop which is so amazing it's the littlest things that go such a long way I swear they are so much more comfortable they're warm they're doing great I mean yesterday I felt so bad for them I was trying my hardest to heat them up. I went and got the, the heat lamp. I showed you guys how I went and got the heat lamp and I went and got I just did everything I could to try to warm them up because I could just tell they were so cold. So this straw made such a huge difference. I don't know what you guys put in the bottom of your chicken coops, but this straw was definitely a win for us for last night to keep them warm. This is the old stud, and you can see it's about three eighths shorter than this one right here. This is meant for a different vehicle, but it's the same thread pitch, same diameter shank and everything, and the th same um, knurls inside there. So it fits in there, I already have it done on that side. This side's apart right now, I'm about to stick these, stick these ones on there, 
and then um, it works out a lot better for those wheel adapters. Don't need that anymore. What is that? That's the rear sway bar so that you don't like sway, like the car doesn't like tip the truck. Oh, that's, what that's reassuring. That's what we want it to do though. We do? Yeah. It won't make it top heavy though, right? Not having it? No, nah, I mean, it'll just make it body roll. Anyway, it's overrated. We don't need it. Come All check right. this out. Okay. So I took the rear tires off after I already put the longer lug nuts in the front, two, two wheel studs or whatever, the two tires up front. I took it off and these things were like, if I can even get this thing on here now, holy crap. It was like right there. I'm gonna get down in here and see this. So you can, you can see, like it's not even through the whole bolt. I called and I ordered 10 more studs that were the same as the front. So now we'll just have to take these out and then do the same thing to that side and then reattach the tires. And then I think we'll be in a safe position not to have broken wheel studs anymore. <laughs> Back at the cabin and we're putting drywall on hold just for a minute because let me show you what's going on here the front door we did drywall up to here now i got to take all this out and then we're going to put a 36 inch door because this is only 30 um, exterior door and then after that's done then we can finish up the drywall so instead of trying to piece the little pieces of drywall in right here right now it doesn't make sense because since i'm going to be cutting all this up so we're going to cut take the trim off cut it where we need to cut it and um take this door out and then we have the new doors sitting right behind me over here and we're going to start putting that in we have this one to do there's one right in front of me and then there's one in this room but for today for now we're going to try to get one of these done see how quick it goes and then we'll go from there let's go Casing? The, yes. The door casing, that's exactly right, babe. Um, and then we measured over. We can't do half and half because there's a, a deck on the outside with a railing. It's right against this thing. And also we have this, so we're just gonna cut all on that side. We measured over. This is gonna, this is to 38 right here. I'm using a self-leveling laser. I marked 38, now I have it right there. I'm gonna grab my Sawzall and just go all the way up. And then we're probably gonna have to take a few inches off of here too, because we need to go up to 82. And right now it's at like 79. So we're gonna have to go up to here. We're gonna cut straight through the drywall, straight straight through the TNG. And we have no idea what's in, the, uh, what's in there. We're gonna figure it out right now and then we're gonna have to cut the outside as well, obviously.
if it ain't another hole. All right. Pretty sure that's why that was there. We're gonna cover it right back up with some more drywall. This place is so holy. <laughs> Well, if you cut that off, is the whole cabin going to fall? No. <laughs> but a quarter of it? <laughs> no, I don't think it's going to fall. We just got to... Once we take this off, we'll raise it up to here, and then we're going to have to put a piece inside here as like a header, and then we'll move this. We'll get rid of this, and we'll stick a two by four inside here as like a jack stud. There's not going to be a king stud. It's going to be a jack stud. And then... Once that's done, we'll start. Song of the day. All jacked up! That's not what I said. <laughs> um, once that's done, then we can start putting the door in. Babe, is this gonna be like one of those, no matter how crooked the cabin is, the door is gonna be straight? Oh, I hope so. If is I, that what's gonna end up happening? If I know how to cut, I know how to make straight lines. Regardless of this whole thing being not straight this should be straight <laughs> should but i'm not gonna jinx myself <laughs> i know just from looking at like your cuts on that plank i feel like they're like like the house is definitely leaning to the left when in doubt trim it out right that's what they say <laughs> <laughs> I love those moments when you find yourself arguing with a four-year-old. Reindeers live here! <laughs> That's what I was talking about. Like, is a quarter of the cabin gonna fall down right now? Apparently. <laughs> Look at that doorway. Woo!
All right, I don't know if you can hear me because that heater thing's on, but this is not a traditional way to frame a door. I understand that and I know how to do a door traditionally, but this is what we're doing with this. Put the jack stud that goes up to here and it doesn't touch that, but it is what it is. And then just kind of spliced in some two by fours right here for the header board. And now we're gonna both put the door right inside here. Let's do it. All right, so the, the roof opening is done on the front. Now we have our 36 by 80 inch door right here, exterior door. It's a left in swing. It's perfect, it's the same style that was in there before. So we're gonna put this in there and start screwing it in place. We're gonna have to makeshift some shims again because we don't have any like legit shims. So we're gonna wing it as usual. But hopefully we can get this in. Let's go play it. Remember when you always say tight like a tiger? You got the level on everything? Trying. All right, um, can you? Any door? Yeah. Purdy. <laughs> it's purdy white. Purdy. Now get out and stay out. Oh, come on. Knock, knock. No one's home. Ugh. Let me in. No. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your cabin down. You blow it down anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, we got this door in. We got. We need to find a little shims and do a little things, but it's pretty much in. It's not going anywhere, and um, we don't have any door handles yet. So this is as far as we're getting today. We have two more of these to do in the back of the house, which I'm super excited about. You can't see it on my face. Oh, super excited about it. I see that smile. There it is. There. Um, anyway, we're gonna clean up. We're gonna get out of here. It is cold. I'm gonna some food. Sun is peeking over the mountains. It's gonna go down here in the next like probably hour, 45 minutes. We yeah. still have a lot of stuff to do. Yep. Let's get out of here. Let's go. to the property i'm tongue twisted <laughs> we just got back up to the property finished putting that front door in the in the cabin and yeah we worked on the, the jeep a little bit today we got um some more lug nuts to change out but we're gonna do that mm -hmm. not lug nuts studs yes um, the longer ones anyway there's a lot of stuff being ordered there's some really cool events coming up in one of the towns closest to us so stay yeah, tuned yeah we're gonna go check that out for our video that'll start tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys and liked this video. Yes. Like, uh, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in a few days. Bye.